Hello everyone, with the Jamaica here. Welcome to this updated video on the across Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. It is Wednesday evening, November 15, 2023. Now before we jump into it, please ensure that you guys like the video, share it, subscribe and tap notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I post a brand new video. Feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section letting me know what the other has been like in your year recently. Also feel free to ask any other related question that you might have about the future of the in your specific era. Alright, so let us take a look at what the US National Hurricane Center is showing on their 7 day graphical tropical weather outlook. We can still see that we have that era highlighted across the sea to the southeast of the United States that has a 10% chance of tropical cyclone formation within the next 7 days. And we can also see that we still have that era across the central and southwestern Caribbean Sea that now has a 50% chance of tropical cyclone formation during the next 7 days. According to the Hurricane Center, it states, regardless of development, this system is expected to, be, to produce heavy rains that could result in flash flooding and mudslides over portions of the Caribbean coast of Central America and the Greater Antilles through this weekend. Interest in Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, the southeastern Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands should continue to monitor the progress of this system. And this system actually has a 40% chance of cyclone formation within the next two days as it moves towards the northeast. And if we take a look at what the UR model is showing re regarding the forecasted rain, we know the greens on this map represent some amount of rainfall. Yellows even more rainfall the heavier we get as it gets colorful. And we can see that if we move forward in time, so we're moving ahead to about 7 a.m. on Thursday. We're starting to see more of these greens that represent rainfall heading into sections of Jamaica. So the rainfall did indeed start today across sections of Jamaica, but it was not as widespread as one would have thought. But yes, some sections of the island got on some amount of rainfall. We're going to confirm this later on with the comments. So we can see as we move ahead to even about 1 p.m. on Thursday, according to the Euro, the greens that represent rainfall are definitely across the island. Then, as we head into about 7 p.m. on Thursday, this is 0 Z Friday. So the next 36 hours, we start to see some of that yellow showing up. We even start to see that L that represents the era flow pressure to the southwest of the island. So lots of yellows, lots of tremendous flooding rainfall across the island of Jamaica coming in from the south heading northward even some reds in there as we head into the 10 p.m. time frame on a Thursday night spilling into early Friday morning so this is 7 a.m. and we still see we still see a lot of rainfall across the island with the heaviest of it off to the northeast of the island by then skipping ahead to about let's say this is 7 p.m. on Friday we can still see a lot of greens that represent rainfall across Jamaica and the majority of it has now shifted to the east and to the northeast of the island. Then uh, by around 7 a.m. on Saturday we start to see some amount of clearing taking place but we still have some isolated showers here and there. Taking a look at what the GFS model is showing at the same time frame. So 7 a.m. on Thursday, greens that represent rainfall starting to make their way even more widespread across the island. Then by around 7 p.m. on Thursday, look at what we see. Darker greens, even the yellows and reds that represent rainfall to the south of the island of Jamaica. Then as we head into Friday now, this is 7 a.m. on Friday. So we see some discrepancies in the time frames of like what the Euro and the GFS model are showing. But there's definitely rainfall in the forecast across the island for the next 24 to 48 hours. And uh, we see the consensus, lots of yellows and reds that represent some tremendous rainfall that's expected. Then as we can see that by 7 a.m. on Saturday, just like on uh, the Euro model, much of the same, we start to see some of that clearing out. Only some isolated patches of greens that represent rainfall with the majority of it to the east and the northeast of the island of Jamaica so we can already start to see the deep convection associated with this system there is a lot of convergence actually taking place 
if we take a look at the visible satellite images of the Atlantic before the sun went down, we can see the low level flow, steering flow coming in from the east southeast across the Caribbean, piling up all of this here right here across the waters of the Western Caribbean. It's like it's hitting a wall right here and then we have all of that upper level channeling that upper level flow especially considering the trough of low pressure across the gulf of mexico is trying to make its way eastward into the southwestern united states trying to anchor this system grab a hold of it and pull it all the way up with all its moisture into portions of jamaica so we're starting to see a lot of convergence taking place where all of these winds are starting to meet up with the winds of the western caribbean that look like they're coming in from the north and north northwest so we're having all of this air piling up all of this rising motion lots of convergence taking place showers and thunderstorm activity rising here then we're going to be having all of that deep convection make its way to the northeast across Jamaica so there's definitely gonna be some amount of flash flooding taking place if you have to go to work on Thursday <laughs> go there at your own risk especially on Friday where it's gonna be even worse definitely most persons definitely won't be going to work or school on Friday at all with the amount of rainfall that is predicted and we can see the lines that represent the cold front right there across the northern portion of the basin to the north of the greater Antilles as well as sections of the eastern gulf of mexico and we do see the clouds associated with that when we take a look at the visible satellite images so we're definitely gonna be in for some very heavy weather across the greater antilles especially jamaica as we head into thursday and friday so ensure that you try to take necessary precautions so that you're not that drastically affected by what's to come if we take a look at what was predicted in yesterday's video about the weather across Jamaica for today, Wednesday, it was stated that we would have received some amount of early morning rainfall across sections of eastern Jamaica on Wednesday, then spilling into sections of some central and western parishes, especially during the afternoon. And we know eastern parishes were talking about those parishes in the county of Surrey, so Kingston, St. Andrew, Portland, St. Thomas. Central parishes were talking about those parishes in the county of Middlesex, so St. Anne, St. Mary, Manchester, Clarendon, St. Catherine. And Western parishes were talking about those parishes in the county of Cornwall, so St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland, Hanover, St. James, and Trelawney. And what ended up happening? As early as 6.30 a.m., we posted the Cuban Doppler radar images on our Twitter page, not only our Twitter page, but our Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok page. So keep in mind that we don't only make posts on our YouTube page, we make posts on those other social media platforms. So if you're on those platforms, please ensure that you're following us there, as we do make some very eventful mini posts there that are not made on YouTube. Like this, the Cuban Doppler radar images at 6.30 a.m. confirming the rainfall that was predicted for the early morning across eastern Jamaica. And we do see the greens and even yellows that represent moderate to even heavy rainfall across those spots. And some of this rainfall even spilled into sections of some northern and southern coastal areas of Jamaica. So definitely sections of St. Anne, St. Mary, sections of let's say southern Clarendon got in on some of that at around that time. Then, by around 9.05 a.m., we saw that the upper level winds were being blown off towards the northeast with majority of the heaviest rainfall to the southwest of the island, as indicated by those sparkling white dots that indicate some thunderstorm activity as the low, from, the low level flow from the east pushed to the west. So it made sense that all of those high cumulonimbus clouds were being blown off by that upper level wind shear from the southwest just like what we predicted yesterday which is why in even in our video yesterday even in the title we highlighted the fact that it would be rainy and cloudy so yes it was raining in some spots but definitely more and we have some cloudy conditions across the island and we saw that we had some of that cloudy condition and even some isolated areas across sections of some eastern central and western parishes then at 3 or 5 p.m we still had much of the same with especially northern and western parishes getting in on the brunt of that overcast skies condition and we even had some of our commenters on our instagram page confirming the rainfall that they got kimberly ash 94 stating the morning look rainy my side akim read 44 stating it's raining and then we had Coco Sheck stating, raining Mandeville now. Then Gaza Angel stating, 
raining in Maypen, Clarendon. So this indeed confirms the rainfall that we got across the section of the island for today. And even if we take a look at the corporate area on the Crossroads Cam from C Jamaica's YouTube channel, we definitely saw that it was quite the cloudy day. We didn't see much sunshine across the island of Jamaica. We even saw one or two sprinkles here and there in sections of Kingston and St. Andrew. And if you don't know by now, we have a partnership with this YouTube channel that See Jamaica, where they show live streams of not only Kingston, the harbor, halfway tree, and even uptown as well. So if you'd like to see those live streams, feel free to go over and check out their YouTube channel that See Jamaica. And if we take a look at the visible satellite images of Jamaica before the sun went down, we can see that flow coming in up in the low levels from the east southeast. Then we had that upper level flow from the north or from the southwest to the northeast across the island with those high level clouds. And we can see it even better. That's the upper level flow that is on the infrared satellite images. Can't see the low level flow at all, especially when the sun is down. And we're definitely going to be getting in on more of that with the heavy weather coming in from the south and southwest across the island. Taking a look at the Doppler radar images right now, we can see, even if we reload the pages, hopefully we're going to see the latest. So, definitely up to 7 p.m. We can see that we still have some amount of rainfall across the island to the south. We can see that flow coming in from the east southeast. A lot of that ear piling up right there to the southwest of Jamaica, and it's definitely going to be some of this that's going to be making its way and meandering across sections of the island of Jamaica during the next 24 to 48 hours. We don't see much of this era moving at all. It's just piling up. And that's definitely what's going to be happening across Jamaica for the next two days. That's going to be bringing some amount of flood triggering rainfall across the island. If we take a look at what the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology website showed in terms of the isolated rainfall that we got, it was definitely a section of eastern parishes as well as sections of some central and western parishes just as predicted and we can even see that east south easterly flow just like what was predicted with that east south easterly wind taking a look at the temperatures right now we can see that we have 26 degrees celsius in montego bay 27 degrees celsius in kingston and by about 3 a.m on thursday the temperature should dip down to about 25 degrees celsius in montego bay 23 degrees celsius in kingston as it relates to the temperature forecast for Thursday, we are happy to see that we don't have blues that represent below normal temperatures. We don't have yellows or oranges or reds that represent above normal temperatures across Jamaica. It's just going to be average. We take a look. The zeros right here. Average temperatures, which makes sense considering the very cloudy day that's expected, not to mention the wet weather. So we're definitely going to be getting in on some average or normal temperature for Thursday and we know the normal temperatures across Jamaica for the month of November about 88 degrees Fahrenheit and when we take a look at the thermometer that's about the same as 30 degrees Celsius so yes we'll definitely take that temperature forecast especially considering the weather that's forecasted as it relates to the dry air map we can see the dry air is represented by the yellows the oranges the reds and what's within those reds by the key at the bottom we do see some dry air Stretching all the way from Africa into portions of the northeastern Caribbean, all the way into sections of Hispaniola. We also see some dry air across the Gulf of Mexico. Where we don't see that dry air is from the western Caribbean into the central Caribbean, where, where we have all of those clouds. Lots of blues. So we have a lot of moist air across the Jamaica area at this time. As it relates to the siren dust forecast for 2 p.m. on Thursday, we do see all of the siren dust that stretches all the way from Africa into sections of the eastern caribbean but i doubt majority of the people in the eastern caribbean that are gonna be affected by the siren dust are gonna even see the hazy skies or even have their asthma or sinusitis triggered especially considering that this is not such a robust plume of dust as we can see 2 p.m on thursday has jamaica in the clear as related to this wave forecast we still see much of the same the purples and pinks that represent two meter wave heights or more across eastern and southern waters of the island 
while Northern and Western Jamaica should be getting in on those blues. They represent 1 to 1.5 meter wave heights, and we can see that by the key on the bottom right. And that's because the winds are going to be coming in, still coming in from the east southeast for the most part across the island for tomorrow. Maybe more in the way of southeast. We see that flow southeast to northwest across the island for tomorrow and we see a lot of yellows in there so it's definitely gonna be quite windy we know the yellows represent 25 knots to even 30 knot winds so any rainfall that we're gonna be expected or expecting gonna be coming in from the southeast definitely with that upper level flow and the convergence taking place more in the way from the south or even the southwest it's definitely gonna be quite a wet day for tomorrow we can see that upper level flow right here coming in from the southwest across the island and we see that on both the Euro and the JFS malls as it relates to the rainfall forecast now we do see the consensus we do see some blues that represent rainfall across southern Jamaica on the Euro for 12 a.m. that's midnight tonight GFS is even more robust with that rainfall even showing some darker blues and even greens in there that represent more in the rainfall Skipping ahead to about 6 a.m. We see some rainfall across sections of Jamaica, but there's some amount of contrast taking place. What's the difference? The Euro model showing more of that rainfall that represented by the greens and the blues across southern and western Jamaica. So Westmoreland, St. Elizabeth, Manchester, Clarendon. While on the GFS, it's more of that rainfall across southern and eastern Jamaica. So southern Clarendon, southern St. Catherine, Kingston, St. Andrews, Portland, and St. Thomas. So we see some contrast. We don't, we're not sure what the GFS or the Euro are planning. We shall see which one of them actually win for this time period 6 a.m. Either way, rain is in the forecast for Jamaica. So it's quite concerning, especially when we see those green colors in there you know, and the darker blues. We know that that's definitely a lot of rainfall that could trigger some amount of flash flooding. Skipping ahead to about 9 a.m. now. We start to see more in the way of rainfall. Look at those blues and even some greens. And we're looking for consensus. We're looking for where we see it on both maps so definitely a section of st thomas and portland still in place especially on the gfs model where we see those greens maybe some southern coastal areas on the gfs model for sections of let's say manchester clarinet st catherine here is a bit more robust showing more of that rainfall inland and even sec sec sections of some western portion of the island as well Either way, we do see the consensus that yes, definitely Eastern Jamaica is going to be getting in on that rainfall. And that's the thing, even if the system does not develop into a tropical storm or a tropical depression, we know how these troughs can be. These troughs can definitely dump a lot of rainfall within a short period of time. There are even times when the troughs are bringing more in the way of cloudy weather than anything else, or don't even bring rainy weather at all. Maybe some areas might be getting in on some sunshine other areas getting in on some tremendous flooding rainfall these troughs and i've said it before and i'll say it again can be very unpredictable and especially considering that there is no definitive low level area as yet this is still a developing system with a lot of messy weather cloud showers and thunderstorm and considering the southwesterly upper level flow of it all it's definitely gonna be very interesting to see what happens within the next 24 to 48 hours either way the models are predicting rainfall and we need to be on guard just in case some amount of flash flooding takes place look at this look how colorful the euro model gets this is 8 p.m on thursday evening and look at all of those yellows oranges reds in there as well gfs showing some amount of rainfall across the same spots southern and eastern jamaica but more than we have some greens that represent rainfall and we're gonna be giving another forecast in tomorrow's video as a matter of fact we might even post a video during the day time while all of this bad weather is happening and even if we take a look at the accumulated precipitation forecast this is some tremendous rainfall that's forecasted we don't normally see this kind of rainfall as a matter of fact this is the most we've seen all um the one hour or the 24 hour total rainfalls on the euro on the gfs malls being forecasted all year look at all of these purples even getting in on some crazy in there across section of central jamaica maybe clarendon up to 5.09 inches of rainfall expected across the island on the euro gfs not so robust most of the rainfall confined to eastern jamaica only up to 2.75 
inches of rainfall either way both miles are showing rainfall and we know that even we get past the one inch of rainfall mark that's definitely tremendous rainfall the one inch is represented by the red i know that that could definitely lead to some amount of isolated flash flooding if we know how jamaica is in terms of its terrain and low-lying areas so ensure that you stay on your feet stay alert so that you're not that drastically affected by what exactly takes place some isolated flash flooding the med service hasn't issued a flash flood watch or flash flood warning as yet there is still a severe weather alert in place so ensure that if you're going out tomorrow to work or to school try to stay as safe as possible turn around don't drown do not go across flooded roadways all right so we can see that by this bar graph kingston at the top one thing about the bottom we're in the month of november we're wrapping up the last month of the rainy season december starts the dry season and that runs all the way until april so yes we'll take all the rainfall that we can get the rainfall is always a good thing as long as we don't get too much rainfall all at once so yes we'll take all the rainfall that we can get before we head into a dry season all right so that is it for the forecast across jamaica let us focus our attention on the rest of the caribbean so we do see that area of low pressure that the hurricane center has been monitoring across the gulf of mexico it is this low pressure that's expected to shoot off towards the east and then grab a hold of the low pressure in the southwestern caribbean and sucking all of this into the northeast maybe pushing all of this weather into jamaica and cuba we can also see a lot of clouds and showers and thunderstorms associated with it affecting sections of guatemala honduras nicaragua costa rica panama colombia we can also see some rainfall coming into section of the windward islands barbados sections of saint lucia saint vincent and the grenadines trade and tobago eastern venezuela guyana even sections of suriname and french guyana getting in on some of that if we take a look at the Doppler radar images of the northeastern Caribbean, we can definitely see that we didn't have much in the way of rainfall across that era for today. If the map actually loads, all right, doesn't look like this map wants to load at all. Let's look at the Barbados radar. The, the Barbados radar is big enough. So we can see that we didn't have much taking place across the northeastern Caribbean at all. Majority of the weather is confined to the windward islands. So St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, just like what we saw in the satellite images just now. And there's definitely a lot more rainfall that's headed into sections of Trinidad as we speak for tonight. You can see those greens and yellows, especially eastern Trinidad, gonna be getting nailed tonight. Definitely some heavy rainfall gonna be taking place. And if we take a look at the wider view of the Florida images, we can see that here across the northeastern Caribbean, just like I stated. And we can also see a lot of heavy weather, lots of convergence also taking place across sections of Florida, western Cuba. Lots of flooding taking place as well. So if you have relatives in Florida, <laughs> you need to check up on them. They could be getting in on some flooding taking place as we speak. Taking a look at the Central America area, we can see that flow coming in from the north just like what we mentioned earlier and we do see some isolated rainfall taking place across sections of belize northern guatemala and even sections of honduras taking a look at the temperature forecast for tomorrow we do see that majority of the caribbean should be getting an average to about maybe 30 degrees Celsius above normal temperatures for thursday as related to the siren dust forecast for 2 p.m. on thursday majority of the caribbean should be in the clear with only some slight hazy weather across the eastern caribbean and they would even be noticing the hazy weather in the sky considering how weak the plume of saran dust is majority of the dust is right there across the main development region and africa and it's not even that robust usually when it's robust we see a darker shade of brown as it relates to the wave forecast we can still see much of the same majority of the blues that represent 1 to 1.5 meter wave heights across sections of the eastern and the western caribbean and the purples and pinks that represent two meter wave heights or more across sections of the gulf of mexico the southwestern to the northern atlantic sections of the waters to the south of haiti and the dominic and jamaica that is and that's because the winds are going to be strongest across those areas the winds are strongest wherever we have those yellows 25 knots or more 
across the Gulf of Mexico, the northern Gulf of Mexico, right there across the southwestern Atlantic to the east of Florida, not to mention the waters to the south of Jamaica and Haiti, all of that coming in from the southeast or the east southeast across Jamaica for tomorrow. Well, the greens we know represent up to 10 to 15 or even 20 knots coming in from the east at most. And we see that on both the Euro and the GFS mall, and we know we're looking for consensus. Let's release the rainfall forecast now. Look at the next 24 hours. Look at what's predicted. These maps go all the way up until 10 p.m. on Thursday. That's 3Z on Friday. When we calculate that, that's 10 p.m. on Thursday. And look at what we see. We're looking for consensus. Maybe some isolated spots of rain across Haiti, Dominican Republic. Maybe sections of, let's say, Guadeloupe and Dominica. But we start to see more new rainfall across sections of Martinique, St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, seeping out to the south. We see the content as definitely some isolated rainfall as well for sections of Suriname, French Guyana, but more in the way for rainfall for sections of Guyana, Eastern Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, sections of El Salvador, some isolated rainfall, Guatemala, especially northern and central Guatemala, sections of Belize, and sections of the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, some isolated rainfall. Well, look at that. Sections of Cuba and the Cayman Islands are going to be getting on some rainfall. While the purples and the heaviest rainfall should be across sections of Florida, the Bahamas, and sections of Jamaica, or even the waters to the south of Jamaica for the next 24 hours. So, definitely some amount of flash flooding is going to be taking place. If it's not already taking place across Florida or the Bahamas, it's definitely going to be taking place before we all is said undone by 10 p.m. on Thursday. I know that when both maps are showing something similar like, similar like this, the chances of it actually happening are much higher. Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching.